The skeleton muscle cells of our body use a process we call glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle to actually move the NADH molecules produced in the glycolytic pathway from the cytoplasm and into the electron transport chain of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now, other cells of our body, such as cardiac muscle cells and liver cells, use a slightly different shuttle process. And so in this lecture, I'd like to focus on a shuttle known as the malate aspartate shuttle. And the shuttle is used by cardiac muscle cells and liver cells to actually move the NADH molecules produced in the glycolytic pathway into the matrix of the mitochondria. So let's begin by examining the following diagram. So in this diagram, we have the inner membrane of the mitochondria and we have the matrix side of the mitochondria. So this is essentially the cytoplasmic side. Now in step one, we basically want to transform the NADH molecule that is produced in a glycolytic pathway into NAD+. And in this process, we ultimately extract those two high energy electrons and we place them onto oxaloacetate. In the process, we actually reduce oxaloacetate into malate. Now, the reason that we actually want to transform the oxaloacetate into malate is because firstly, the oxaloacetate cannot actually move across the mitochondrial membrane. And secondly, we want to take those electrons from the NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway and transport them onto a molecule that can in fact move across the mitochondrial membrane, the outer and the inner mitochondrial membrane. So once we actually form the malate, the malate now contains the high energy electrons that were stored on the NADH and the malate can now move across a special anti-porter transport system found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria and as the malate moves into the matrix of the mitochondria an alpha ketoglutarate is, extra is exchanged for that malate and it moves into the intermembrane space and then into the cytoplasm of that particular cell. So in step one, the NADH that is produced in glycolysis is used to reduce oxaloacetate into malate. And what this does is, it allows that cell to regenerate the NAD plus that is needed by glycolysis to actually continue glycolysis and it also transfers the pair of electrons from the NADH onto that oxaloacetate to form the malate so that once the malate moves into this side of, uh, this matrix of the mitochondria we can actually oxidize that malate back into oxaloacetate and reduce an NAD plus found in the matrix into NADH and that NADH can be used by the electron transport chain as we'll see in just a moment so in step two once we form the malate in the cytoplasm of our cell the malate then moves into the intermembrane space via the outer membrane of the mitochondria and then that malate enters the matrix of the mitochondria via a special anti-porter transport protein in exchange for an alpha ketoglutarate and in step three <clears throat> in step three we actually take the high energy electrons on the malate that initially came from NADH and we place them onto that NAD plus coenzyme to actually form the NADH. So in a way we actually see that the NADH is transported into the matrix of the mitochondria and we also form, we reform the oxaloacetate. Now once the oxaloacetate, oh and by the way, the enzyme that catalyzes this step, the conversion of malate into oxaloacetate is known as the mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase and this is the same enzyme that is used by the citric acid cycle. Now, once we form the oxaloacetate, the problem with the oxaloacetate is it can simply pass across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. We have to transform the oxaloacetate first into aspartate before it can actually move across this special anti-porter protein system. 
And so the process by which we transform the oxaloacetate into aspartate is known as transamination. We essentially take an amino group from another molecule, namely the glutamate, we place it onto oxaloacetate and that's how we form the aspartate. So in step four shown here, the oxaloacetate cannot move across the inner mitochondrial membrane and so a transamination reaction converts it into aspartate. Now in step five, once we form the aspartate, the aspartate can now flow out of the inner membrane of the mitochondria via an exchange a transport system, an antiporter system, in exchange for glutamate. So the aspartate flows out and the glutamate actually flows in. Now what happens to that glutamate? What is glutamate actually used for? Well, glutamate is actually used in the transamination reaction that we mentioned in step four. That glutamate has an amino group and that amino group is essentially taken off from that glutamate. It is placed onto axiloacetate and that's how we form the aspartate. And the remaining portion that is left over once we essentially deaminate that glutamate, that is what we call alpha-ketoglutarate. And the alpha-ketoglutarate is used to actually help transport the malate in this anti-porter exchange transport system. So in step six shown here, the glutamate transfers an amino group onto axiloacetate and that forms aspartate. And the remaining portion of that glutamate is known known as alpha-ketoglutarate. Uh, alpha now in the final step, step seven, we have the aspartate that is actually transported back into the cytoplasm of our cell. The aspartate undergoes a reaction to form the oxaloacetate. In this process, we basically take the aspartate, we deaminate that aspartate, we remove the amino group, and that forms the oxaloacetate. And that amino group is actually placed onto the alpha-ketoglutarate that entered the cytoplasm via this antiporter system and that transforms the alpha ketoglutarate into glutamate and this essentially completes the cycle and the cycle can repeat itself so in the final step step seven the aspartate in the cytoplasm is deaminated we remove the amino group and we place it onto this alpha ketoglutarate to form that glutamate in the process when we deaminate the aspartate we form that oxaloacetate and now since we reform this molecule the cycle can basically begin all over again so we see that the net result in the malate aspartate shuttle process is we actually move that NADH molecule into the matrix of the mitochondria. So we take those high energy electrons, we extract them from the NADH that is produced in glycolysis, we place them into a molecule that is then transported into the matrix and then we use those same high energy electrons to actually form the NADH molecule. So in this shuttle process, the, NAG, uh, the NADH is regenerated in the matrix of the mitochondria. So we, we saw that in the previous discussion when we discussed the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, we saw that a net result of 1.5 ATP molecules were produced from a single NADH that was gen uh, NADH that was generated in the process of glycolysis. Now the question is, what is the net quantity of ATP molecules produced by this NADH molecule that is transported into the matrix of the mitochondria via the malate aspartate shuttle process? So. Once the NADH is actually formed within the matrix of the mitochondria, it goes on to complex one of the electron transport chain. And this is in contrast to the previous shuttle system that we discussed, the glycerol phosphate shuttle system, in which the NADH actually ends up, uh, the electrons on the NADH end up being transferred onto complex three. So here, the NADH is basically, we take the NADH that we form in the matrix and we essentially oxidize it into NAD+. In this process, as the electrons move along the groups within complex one, a net result of four 
ATP molecules are actually transported into the matrix of the, uh, into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. Now those electrons eventually end up on quinone. The quinone becomes uh, um, the ubiquinone. The ubiquinone becomes the ubiquinol, and the ubiquinol travels onto complex three, and those electrons then move onto the groups found within complex three, and those electrons ultimately end up on cytochrome C. And as these electrons move, we see that a net result of four uh, no, two a, uh, H plus ions actually flow, flow from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And so, so far we have four and two that's six. And as the electrons are transferred from the cytochrome C onto complex four, we see that a net result of four ATP, uh, four H plus ions are transferred into the intermembrane space. And so a total of four, two and four, so 10 H plus ions actually are transferred into the intermembrane space. And so now these 10, I, uh, these 10 ions travel through complex five ATP synthase. And because four protons are needed to pass along the ATP synthase to actually generate a single ATP molecule, we see that if we do a little bit of math, so we have 10 H plus ions, we divide that by four H plus ions needed to generate a single ATP molecule that gives us 2.5 ATP molecules are generated uh, every time this NADH is transported into the matrix via the malate aspartate shuttle system. So in the malate aspartate shuttle system, the NADH is regenerated in the matrix of the mitochondria. Therefore, in liver, so this should be therefore, therefore in liver and heart cells, the NADH produced in glycolysis generates a net result of 2.5 ATP molecules. And this is in contrast to the NADH that is produced in glycolysis in cells such as skeletal muscle cells that use the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle system instead of the malate aspartate shuttle system.